Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and welcome to the second video of my Music Theory Made Easy mini tutorial series um, in FL Studio. In the previous video, I talked about the typing keyboard to piano keyboard and the different mappings there. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the VFX key mapper. Now, the easiest way to use this plugin is to use it inside of Patcher. So if you already have a synthesizer loaded in, uh, you can easily just open the plugin picker and get Patcher and just drag it onto the synth sound that you already have in there. And so you can see, you know, it loaded up Patcher and just put that citrus patch that I had right into the Patcher. Um, alternatively, you can just, of course, add a Patcher and then you know, add whatever plugin you want in there if you don't already have the plugin loaded up. Um, so then what you do is add a plugin and add the VFX key mapper. And then you just go, you know, from FL Studio to the key mapper and then to Citrus. And this allows you to you know, manipulate the MIDI input into this um, Citrus patch. And you can basically map the different keys of, you know, the MIDI input data to various kinds of outputs. So the default mapping is just uh, the output matches the input. So, you know, if I play the C major scale, uh, it just plays normally. But you can change this either by you know making the changes yourself or by selecting some presets. So in this video, I'm not going to do a complete tutorial about how this plugin works uh, because that is best saved for a different video, but I will address kind of the basic functions that will help you use this in a way to assist you in your application of the basic concepts of music theory. So by default, the original key is C, and then it just goes up the chromatic scale. Um, but you can change that by changing the bass key. So if you are working in you know the F whatever scale, uh, you can change the bass key to be F. Um, or if you're doing another scale, you can just change the bass key to be the root note of that scale. Uh, but I'm going to keep it on C. So if you saw my previous video, I talked about the different mappings that you can use for the typing keyboard to piano keyboard inside of FL Studio. And basically this plugin allows you to do um, the same kind of thing, but it allows you to use a MIDI keyboard as well as your typing keyboard. Um, so it does offer some presets, which uh, you can load by right clicking on these arrows. And then you can see it has some categories, chords, harmony, scales. Uh, so I'll start off with some scales. And I'll select the blues scale. And you can see what it does is it maps the notes that aren't in the C blues scale to notes that are in the C blues scale. So normally the C sharp note is not in the C blues scale. And so what it's done is, when I play a C sharp, it plays the same note as if I play a C. And so it's done that with other notes as well, and now no matter what key I play, it's going to go into the key mapper, and the key mapper is going to output it so that you know any key I play is mapped to a key that is in the C blue scale. So I can just kind of play whatever I feel like playing. And, you know, whatever I play, it's going to be in the blue scale. So there are a few scales that, um, you know, this offers as presets. One thing to keep in mind is that the Aeolian scale is the natural minor. And so you'll hear this. Uh, 
Yeah, that was me actually playing the C major scale, but because of this mapping, it mapped it to the C natural minor scale. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind, the Aeolian is the natural minor. And then in addition to the scales, you have harmony and chords. If I go into chords and minor progression, it will map the different notes to uh, some chords. And so if I play, you know, different notes, You know, it just is uh, a very easy way for me to get some nice chord progressions just by experimenting and playing on the MIDI keyboard. And of course, you know, it doesn't offer a ton of presets, so you can kind of alter them or uh, create your own from scratch. So to do that, uh, I just loaded up the default preset. You can change the mapping of a note by clicking um, and that will add in a note to be mapped. So right now, if I play the C, it will play three notes at once. The C, F, and G sharp. Uh, and then I can click again to remove any of the notes. And now if I play a C, it won't play anything. Uh, and I can right click to, you know, overwrite the note, basically. So instead of adding a note, I can right click to overwrite the current one. And so if you want to, you can use, you know, some music theory websites or books as references to kind of make your own custom presets that you think will be useful. Um, or of course, if you have, you know, a decent knowledge of music theory, you can uh, use that knowledge. But let's say I want to map the C major scale to some chords. I can, you know, basically pencil in some different notes of the different chords. Uh, so this would be the root chord. And then if I want to, I can make it so that, you know, these sharps won't play at all just by removing them. And you can see I'm playing um, C sharp, but nothing is playing. Uh, nothing's coming out of the key mapper. And so I can go through and, you know, make these different chords. So now I have it set up so that it will play the different chords of the C major scale. Um, and you'll hear if I play, you know, the different notes. Yeah, you, know, you can hear that it's playing the different chords. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, you know, this is a very powerful tool. And hopefully, you know, if you need it, hopefully you will find this video helpful. And hopefully, you know, using the key mapper will allow you to come up with melodies and chord progressions um, a little bit more easily, uh, especially if you're a beginner. Um, but like I said, you know, I only covered the basic functions of the key mapper. There are, you know, some other different options. And I, in, in the future, I might make a video about the key mapper in general. Uh, but for now, you can always read the manual as well. Uh, but yeah, so ho hopefully this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.